And when we do that, when we begin to share one with another without any reservations whatsoever, and only God know when we get there, then God will give you and entrust you with more of his spirit and more of his power. Come on, somebody. Because he doesn't give it to those who does not have his character. Amen? So uh, this is the reason why that it is so many of us in the church today, we're treating the church more as a business rather than, uh, you know, tit for tat, rather than saying, listen, I love you, I will help you, and, and we are going to help each other, and we're going to make it, you know. But you have to love God first. You can't even love your family if you don't love God. Come on, somebody. And so this is the key. If we make God number one, then everything else will begin to fall in line. And this is what I want to get to because when we begin to talk about all things common, see, people can't see spiritually until they begin to, to get more of him, more of the spirit, see? And so we need that. Amen? So as we look at chapter 2 and, uh, and verse 40, let's see what it says because we, uh, when we get uh, to, uh, to uh, 44, I think we'll begin to see how the church began to operate and everything began to go so well with the community. Amen? All right. Now, as we look at uh, Acts 2.40, it says, And with many other words did he testify and exalt, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Now, there are other translations uh, that gives us many other sayings and other words. King James is not saying that some of those people were just not, didn't have the right character. But uh, the other translations will begin to say it in such a way that you will see exactly uh, what it is saying. Now, <clears throat> as we look at this, and uh, uh, would you start reading for us, and then we'll pick up uh, some more about the mood of the people. Amen? All right. Luke did not record the rest of Peter's witness and exhortation. Yes. But in this exhortation, Peter was evidently exercising another uh -huh. of the gifts of the Spirit. Yes. Romans 12, 8 lists exhortation as a distinct gift of the Holy Spirit. All right. Well, let's go to Romans 12 and verse 8, please. Romans 12 and verse 8. Amen. I tell you, God is just so wonderful. Amen. All right. <clears throat> All right, it says, uh, Or he that exalteth on exaltation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth, with diligence, he that uh, soweth, uh, showeth uh, mercy uh, with cheerfulness. Amen. So this, this is uh, another way that you can see that they had a way of really loving and caring uh, for one another. <clears throat> so this is a wonderful uh, passage of scripture as well. All right, would you read on please? Though 1 Corinthians 14 3 includes is a part of the gift of prophecy. All right, let's go to 1 Corinthians 14 3 please. 
yeah, we are working up on this thing because uh, if you get God first like you're supposed to get him, I mean, everything else is going to work out um, for your favor. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is uh, a beautiful thing. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 3, it says, But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men uh, to edification <clears throat> and exaltation and what? Comfort. How many know it's a whole lot of people need comfort today? I mean, it's just so many people. As I was talking to uh, the lady I was telling you about this morning, she needed some comfort because she had just gotten a bad report from the doctor. But you see, brother, listen. Here's the key. When you get a report like that from your doctor, you have to realize that the word have already said something different that God has already promised you. And those promises are not just for you to say, that. well, that sounds good. Those promises is for you to speak it out of your mouth and then act on it. That's a part of what Yeshua did to the disciples who became apostles. And when they began to, the more they <clears throat> practice it, I'm going to put it that way because we understand that. In other words, by reason of use, the more they used it, that method, they began to see heaven on earth. See, people don't know what it is to practice. They don't know what it means by reason of use. And because of that fact, we have lost the fact of seeing with our eyes heaven on earth. Absolutely. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On earth. But if we don't practice it in our home, you can start it right there. You don't, you don't have to necessarily knock on somebody else's door, which seemed to be one of the things that people don't want to do anymore, and that's exactly against what God uh, had done through Yeshua in the first century. They went from house to house. Come on now. When they went from house to house, they were practicing what Yeshua had taught his disciples who became apostles. And so when they saw him operating in love, then when they couldn't do what he did, then they began to get with him in their little huddle. Amen. And say, well, what, what happened to us? Why, we couldn't do it, what you did. Anybody getting this? See, we cannot see the kingdom on earth until we work it. This is the key. This is the key. It's not just going out knocking on doors. No, when you go out and knock on that door, even though somebody might not accept the Lord, somebody might not get healed, but you have caused that mind to begin to roam and think, oh, am I really missing anything? Come on now. You, 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 you are beginning to see that heaven got you moving. Now, now. Heaven is moving on the hearts and mind of the people, the house you just left. And listen, they are hoping that you would come back. Amen. See, this, this is the key. Yes. Um, and when they were, when we think about knocking on doors, yes. we're just thinking about the way they gave. Yeah. What they were actually doing was, 
they were going to check on people. Yes. And so if you're going to check on somebody, yeah. and, and then whatever their needs are, you meet them. Yes. They're going to listen to what you have to say yeah. because you met a need. So they yes. weren't just knocking to say, do you know the Lord? No. They was coming to see. How? And, if, and if you weren't a believer, what were the needs? What, was the, what comfort did you need? Yes. Because when we just read um, Romans 12 in another translation, it says, if you're a counselor, it yeah. means that somebody <laughs> didn't speak to edify them. Yes. So that means it was somebody who understood yes. what the kingdom was, understood yeah. the Torah, and knew how to edify people. This is exactly what I'm trying to get working back into the church today because we've lost it. And people have got, got to understand it's not plush pews. It's all right to have that, but it doesn't mean that you stay there all the time. Once you get instructions, then you're supposed to get up and go and work it. And that's the part we are missing. So therefore, without the going to take the message like Yeshua taught them, or practice what Yeshua taught them, now we are not seeing anything happening in the community. So this is the key. Listen, we're forgetting the almost the most important Part. We're always finding another way to change the format to make it easier for us. This is the reason why when we were on Chesterfield Avenue, we used to practice these things and we had uh, Virginia State students, all the young people, we had some of everybody interested in that little place we were in. Why? Because they knew we cared. And they knew that we will come, we will go wherever we had to go and pray for them. Amen? And so we, we had to use the word. See, the more you, uh, by reason of use, the more you use the word, the more you use your heart and mind and loving people, then God began to heal, deliver, and set free. Come on, somebody. Show me a church that's not getting any healings and disease is still roaming around in the place is because they don't understand that the Lord said, thy kingdom come. He taught us to pray that. Uh-huh. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? On earth as it already is in the heavens. You see? And so these are real instructions. Amen. So <clears throat> we have got to work this thing. Amen. So uh, would you take us a little further, please? The Bible does not draw hard and fast lines between gifts. Uh -huh. Thus, Peter became the instrument or agent through whom the Holy Spirit carried out the work. Okay. We're told by Jesus in John 16, verse 8. Yeah. There was indeed conviction with respect to sin, righteousness, and judgment to come. Yes. See, see, we're going to get John 16, 8 now. John 16, 8. Now, listen. While I'm going through this, I want you to see what caused them to be able to have all things common. See, they were learning how to have all things common because they were taking their time, giving it to their brother and sister or another household. It was not just you having a great time in the fellowship and then you go home and that it's all over. It wasn't like that, like we do today. That's not church. See, we're fooling ourselves. We're not acting like Christ. Amen. Christ didn't stay home with his family. In fact, they, at one time, they didn't even believe he was the Christ. 
like a lot of people today don't believe that Yeshua <clears throat> is the Christ. But the reason why they don't believe it because they never followed the instructions of Christ. They never seen anything moving in their fellowship and in their home and on their block. Amen? So how can you see it if you don't follow the instructions? You can't see heaven if heaven's people are not moving. And so what I'm trying to get straight, and a lot of people talking about this went out with the apostles. The apostles didn't give it, and the apostles can't take it away. Come on, somebody. See, this, this thing is real, but you got to work it. I can't take all of my time working just for my family. Amen. You know, and you've heard me talk about that uh, for and no more. Uh, just this group, just because I like this group or that group. No, 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 no. This thing is to take the world. Absolutely. That's the reason why the paraclete is here. That's the reason why the spirit of God is here, to help us to work it. And to give us the power and the authority to get it done. And so, uh, folks, the church is not completing the job that they've been taught. Now, I know I'm probably get some flack on that, but I don't care. I'm going to tell the truth anyhow. All right? Okay, so this... This is the point, and this is the reason why I'm taking my time going through this, because we have no right to accept the goodness of God and hold it just in, in, in our home. You see that? All right. Okay, okay. What, what was the next? Uh, John 6. All right, John 16, 8. It says, and when he is come... He will reprove the what? The world of what? The world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So if we want him to do his job, don't you think we need to do ours? Don't you know that it is our job to give the world a chance to live for God? Just like we have. If, if, if that's the reason why we are light and salt. Why make you light and salt if you're not going to light up the world or preserve somebody? Why? It does not make sense. Come on now. And listen. God is so good. He's thought of everything. All we got to do is work it. And that's all that's saying is that he's going to yep. show the world yes. they're wrong about missing the mark. Exactly. See, there's no such thing as missing the mark if you're doing your job. Correct. If you're loving God like you're supposed to, you'll love your fellow man. And whatever your fellow man needs, You'll go to help them if you can get there. Amen. That's the reason why the Apostle Paul changed from just learning the Torah and, and became more like Christ. He said, I want to know him in the fellowship of his suffering. So this means even if I suffer, I want to take this word to the people. Come on, somebody. Paul wasn't just making statements and talking. And he proved it. Because even after they left him for dead, they came and they prayed over him. He got up and went right back being light and salt for anybody else. And traveling. Come on, somebody. So don't tell me... Uh, 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 if you don't believe in Christ, it is because you've never followed him. That's right. you follow, you if you, if, come on somebody, 
if you do what he said do, you will get the results that he said that you can get. So I, I dare anybody to show me wrong in the scriptures. You can't show me wrong. I've, I've seen too much of it. I've been following it ever since I was a child. Amen? So I know this thing work. And if the only reason why you don't see it working in your life is because you've never worked it. Come on, somebody. Come on. We, we start getting into uh, this churchy thing. Or we only go to church and then we go home. Uh, and in between that is Golden Corral. I mean, uh, 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 some place to eat. Come on now. Come on, somebody. Y'all help me, please. Come on, somebody. That's what we began to do. We'll talk about it when we're over a meal, but we ain't knocking on nobody's door. We're not going to the strangers. We're not going to the neighborhoods. And then we call ourselves being light and salt. You are not. And you know you're not. Amen? You better believe it. Amen. And so this is the reason why we don't see nothing happening and I'm just bubbling over to get in here to talk about it. And I don't want to miss nothing because we've been, the church has been too long reading over it and never practicing. Come on, somebody. I'm so sick of it, I don't know what to do. Amen? All right. So now, would you take us a little further, please? The essence of Peter's exhortation was that they should save themselves. All right. The Greek is better translated, be uh, saved. Be saved. All right. Go ahead. From this untoward, untoward yeah. perverse, crooked yeah. generation. Yes. That is, they should turn away from the perversity and corruptness of those in, I'm sorry. For those around. For those around them yeah. who were rejecting the truth about Jesus. Amen. Amen. See, when you talk about the truth, and you don't just finish, when you finish talking, that's not the end of it. You're supposed to be going out doing what he did. Don't fool yourself. This thing works. It has changed. There's still people not believing that he is who he is. You got it, Pastor. This is exactly, most pastors don't teach. Listen, Yeshua carried his group out there. Oh, my God. I just hurt myself. I'm getting too old. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. you, you understand? What we got to understand is that we got to lead the sheep. We got to lead them out there because his disciples did what? For three and a half years, they did what? They followed the shepherd. Now, we want to know what's wrong with the church today. Ain't nothing wrong with the church. There's nothing wrong with the church. The church won't be the church. His instructions work. He would not have given it to you if it did not work. Come on, anybody hearing what I'm saying? Listen, I've done put my hand on this thing, and I'm not going to let it go till we get up and start doing some things. Come on now. And, and this is a reason I, I told Brother Robert, I, I said, hey, we, we got to get this thing going again. And it's all right there in the scriptures. It's all right there. All we got to do is work it. Pay attention to what he's saying. And you put Christ right back into the earth with you. You can hear him talking. 
Amen? Get this done. Do this. Do that. Amen? It's amazing, folks. I'm, I, I, I want to see it. I, 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 I don't know but uh, some things I would like to say, but I have to say those in private, and I don't want to call nobody's name. But we have got to understand that this is a working kingdom. This kingdom is not here just to uh, sit down and do nothing. And people wondering, now what do I do now? Come on now. After you sing songs and you've prayed in here and everybody has felt the presence of God, now it's time to go out there and keep that spirit moving. Glory be to God. All right. Okay. Uh, did we get the last scripture? No. Okay. Go to the last. The next. Compare scripture. Luke nine forty one. Okay. Eleven twenty one twenty nine and seventeen twenty five. All right. Let's go to nine twenty one of Luke, please. Nine twenty one. Let us look at this thing, and folks, for you who are here this morning. Listen, I'm giving you total Bible, how this thing supposed to work. This is not a plaything. This is real. And even if you've been to work all day and you're tired, once you begin to move out there <clears throat> doing the work of Christ, I declare unto you, you're going to feel like you're not tired anymore because the energy of the Spirit of God that's moving through you will revive you. Amen. Don't let nobody fool you. So don't come from work talking about I'm tired. Come on now. You go out there and let the Holy Spirit start moving through you and watch and see what happened to you. Amen. Are you hearing this? Amen. So this is the key. All right, let's see what it says in 921. It says, 941? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, 941. I'm sorry. Ah, there you go. It says, and Jesus answered, uh, answering said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? And suffer you. Bring thy son hither. Look, look, look at that. We have gotten to the point that we don't do what God say. Now we got to have special classes in the church. We got to have do all kinds of things trying to get you up out of the pew and on the street. Come on, somebody. Yo, listen, yeah. am, am I telling the truth? Yeah, and then we, we want to, we want to, and I want to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm study, still buying material to make sure, to make this thing ironclad because I don't want nobody to try to give me an argument that that's not what we are supposed to do. Because I got enough books, that's enough artillery to fight them. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. <clears throat> so I got proof. I know I'm right. I've seen too much. I've been looking at this thing ever since I was a young man. And I've seen so much with my own eyes. I've seen people laying on couches sick. And, I, and not just in one city, two cities, three cities, but it just about everywhere I've been. I've seen them get up well, happy, and give God the praise. Come on, somebody. So you can't just, you can't talk to me 
know any kind of way about this. Amen. Amen. I've seen too much. So, and we can have it. We can have it right here. Amen. And I, I guarantee you, this is what you call evangelism made easy. Because you really know who's doing the work then. Once you're working it, he will do the work. See, so anybody who are scholarly, anybody who are, I'm not knocking that, but what I'm saying, I don't care how many degrees you got on this thing. If you don't work it, you'll never get it done. Are you all hearing? And you'll only believe what you read. <clears throat> and you always gravitate to those who don't go nowhere. And the Spirit of God don't move on them or through them. Therefore, you believe anything. In fact, people have gotten so today, some of them don't even believe in Yeshua anymore. Because they haven't seen anything. Why haven't they seen anything? Because they don't work it. What he say? But I declare unto you, if you work this thing like he told you to do, and you are obedient, you're going to see him come alive through you. Are you all hearing this? And, and now, now <clears throat> I know you haven't heard the book of Acts like this before, but listen, this is it. Are you all hearing this? All right, now, <clears throat> uh, what is that next one? Uh, that was 1129. 11, Give me 1129, please, of Luke. All of these are in Luke. Amen. I pray that everybody getting a hold of this that's here and those who may be listening anywhere else <clears throat> because if we work, it's going to take some time now because we've been lazy too long. Amen? <clears throat> but once, once you begin to get it done, evangelism going to be so easy, people are going to start talking about you and how the Lord is working through you. Come on now. And it's going to be a totally different thing. And some people would start following you because they're after Christ. Come on now. All right? <clears throat> All right? Uh, Luke eleven twenty nine. 29. <clears throat> it says, And when the people were gathered uh, thick uh, together, he <clears throat> began to say, This is an evil generation. It says, <clears throat> they seek a sign, <laughs> and there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of Jonah. You've heard that, haven't you? <clears throat> of Jonah, the prophet. Amen. So this is the kind of thing we're talking about, folks. Uh, we have got to, instead of looking for a sign, why don't you work the signs? Come on now. You, if once you start working the uh, signs, uh, God will work the signs through anybody with his character. You can't work this thing unless you love people. Unless you love God. Of course, God is first always. And then you can love people. Amen? That's the key. And so we should not get things out of order. Now, the reason why, and I'll just say this, the reason why Paul uh, just left everything that he was doing in the beginning because he was thinking that he was supposed to persecute the church that was going. 
see, it's a total different thing, <clears throat> and that this is the reason why I want to show you all this. Paul was acting like a religious person, and all he was doing is studying. Now, we know what he was studying. He knew Torah back and forward. Come on now. But the key is he didn't uh, know how to work it. But, and so he started persecuting those who was acting more like Yeshua. Because he thought that they were what? Totally wrong. Come on, somebody. Y'all help me out. Now y'all read the scriptures. You know exactly what. It's all there anyway. It ain't going to change. It's, it's still there. <clears throat> and this is the re reason why Nicodemus came to Yeshua in the cool of the evening. Come on now. And so he had to learn how to be born what? From above. Come on, somebody. And so once he learned how to be born from above, then he began to understand <clears throat> that it is something else going, not just sitting down studying, but you got to work this thing. Come on now. And so then he... Uh, accepted the Lord that he was baptized, born from above. In other words, as is, we like to say in English, born again. Amen? Then Paul began to work after he met the Lord. And the Lord knew exactly what he, meant, what he, what he needed, didn't he? Because the Lord knocked him off his horse to get his attention and blind him because he was so engrossed in what he had studied until he thought that was all to it. Uh, anybody here? If I don't get any amens, I told y'all I'm going next door. Amen. Amen. So the, the, the key is that once he began to realize after he met Yeshua and Yeshua told him what to do after he realized that he had to ask for help and stop going out persecuting others, amen, that was following Yeshua. But see, Yeshua already knew in his heart that he meant to do right for the true and the living God. Isn't it amazing? He's omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. He knows all, sees all, hears all. So even though you're not doing anything right, he already looked at your heart. He know what you can do, and he know you will or you won't do it. Come on now. But we are being tested when? Every day. See, people find excuses and talk about these, this person, that person, and say all kinds of things and try to make themselves look good and make somebody else look bad. But let me tell you one thing. God knows everything. Isn't that right? He knows everything. He's on the inside of us working out those things to his good pleasure. Not your good pleasure, his good pleasure. Because how many know that God uh, knows how to work with a human being? He made them, didn't he? So how else can it be? He is the creator. So he knows exactly where we are. We don't have to be looking all over the world trying to find something new and different. Well, we got it right here. All we got to do is study and, and act on it. But the action is where we are missing it. And I'm so glad as I begin to thumb through many different things. Some people... Uh, 
uh, uh, all kinds of literature, everything dealing with the Lord and his training. And I begin, I'm not looking at other teachers uh, just to tell me, but I've seen so much during my lifetime. And I, I, want to, I want to be able to tell people the truth, how kingdom works on the earth. We got to practice this thing. We can't come in here and just, just sit on a soft pew. Amen. That's not all of it. We got to get up and move because they went from house to house, house to house. Amen. And you're, you're sure because he was the, so the pastor, the leader, the teacher, he f cared them. That means that if I'm the pastor of this church, I lead you out there so you can see what I'm doing and then you practice the same thing I've, I'm teaching you. Come on now. And so this is the key, folks. But we have missed it big time. But God is going to help us. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, <clears throat> so it's one more verse to that. Luke 17.25. All right. Luke 17.25. All right, Luke 17, 25, and uh, we'll see what that says because we don't want to miss this. This is the book of Acts of the Holy Spirit. Amen? All right, Luke 17, 25, it says, but first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this what? generation don't you know that the Christ the very one we know our Savior that went to the cross for us bled and died for us and told him that he'll get up on the third day huh how could he say that if he didn't know that huh he knew if he did everything that the father told him to do, the next action will be getting on a cloud and going back to take a seat so he can pray for us. Come on, somebody. Now, some people might say, well, how did he know that? Listen, in the spirit, everything is now. That's the reason why he gave us immuna. He gave us faith because faith is when? Now. So he wants us to operate according to heaven. And so as we practice this thing, we would know things when? Now. <clears throat> and we will begin to see it when? Now. Are, are you all getting this? See... Folks, the people of God has, we've missed it. Just like Paul missed it. He was taught, I and mean, he had the best teachers in the world of his day. But he missed it. He could quote the stuff, but he didn't know exactly what it was all about. And we got to stop thinking that, oh, I'm only human. No, no, no. You a spirit too. Oh, y'all ain't heard that. I said you a spirit too. Amen? <clears throat> and so this is, we have to operate uh, not only as a human, but we have to operate in spirit as, and truth as well. We cannot leave anything out. You say, well, if, if, look, I've been to work all day. <clears throat> now I'm going home so I can rest. No, you rest in the Lord. Anybody ever heard that? You rest where? In the Lord. You, you don't just go home and take a seat and look at television after you eat. Come on now. And say you're working in the Lord because you're not. 
you rest in the Lord as the Holy Spirit is moving through you being light and salt. That's where the rest is. Amen? And so this, this is such a key that we got to get a hold of this thing <clears throat> so that we are able to see our sons, our daughters, our, our kinfolks, and everybody else that we love, our neighbors, everybody come to the Lord and they will come to the Lord so much and so fast you'll have to go to another community. Are you hearing that? Amen. Every house of God ought to be full praying against COVID. Come on somebody. And do you think that God's going to have a house full of folks praying about this COVID to get rid of it and COVID's going to still be around? No way. Because what? The kingdom has what? Come. The kingdom has what? Come. And so as long as the kingdom is here, the kingdom is not going to give you COVID. Come on, somebody. See, this is the key, but we've got to work the kingdom. See, this is so important. I've been waiting to get to this point, but I didn't want to miss anything because I am so tired of seeing sick folks and church folks afraid that they're going to get something that God did not give them. Come on now. God will protect us. Amen? And, and we have to believe what he said. All right? <clears throat> okay. Would you go a little further, please? In these passages, Jesus is disturbed by the unbelief, mm -hmm. perversity, and evil of that generation. Uh -huh. And he knew he must endure many things from them and be rejected by them. Amen. So, anybody who's not obedient, call yourself a child of God. You're not obedient <clears throat> to what the Lord is telling us. But yet we know that we are light and salt. But yet we are not spreading it. We are not letting people understand who we are in the earth. And we think uh, uh, because we don't see anything moving, we don't see heaven on earth, so we say it don't exist anymore. So the, what the, well, I hate to say it to some of our leaders, I'll say it that way, say that it went out with the apostles. And I said this the other day, the apostles didn't give it, and the apostles can't take it away. Are you all hearing it? So let us stop believing that talk. Let us go out there and let us work. Let us see this thing done. I, I, as uh, I was speaking to one of our uh, men here in the church, and I began to see that people are walking around here suffering, and we don't even know it. I was so surprised. I was really surprised. And so I've had, I get calls at any time, people calling me, telling me about what the doctor have to say. Well, the doctor is only doing his job, whatever he know how to do. But the people of God got to edge on what God would do. Come on, somebody. And so what we have to do is work the work of the Lord. And then we'll be able to be able to see heaven where? On earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done where? On earth as it is. I would say even already 
in heaven. Amen? So if we want heaven on earth, we got to work it. And that's the key. That's what we are about, light and salt. And so let us stop playing games and let us get together. <clears throat> we ought to see so much happening that we ought to be like some of the first century uh, people that was followed, who had followed Christ. We ought to be like them and we ought to be saying, hey, let us go again because the Lord is moving. Come on now. That's what we ought to be talking like. But I declare unto you, it's not going to come sitting in the pew. You got to get up and move. And then you got to talk to people out there. Amen? And then evangelism will be made easy. Amen? Praise God. So this, this is the key. Uh, how am I doing? Huh? Oh, time's out. All right. Thank you, Reg. Thank you so much. Glory be to God.